Okay, this video is about making a Roycroft pack frame without 550 cord out in the bush in case you run across without 550 cord, which does tend to happen. Not everybody has tactical string when they need it. So what it is, this is an oak branch I got up at my mom's, actually a small sapling I cut down was for another project. Decided to repurpose it. It's seasoned oak, which is a real turd to work, especially with a knife. Trekker knife, which I was assuming if you're going to be caught out in the bush having to do this, and this is the only thing you're going to have. So I decided to do it just to see if I could do it with just the knife. All right, now this doesn't is it this isn't difficult. It just takes a bit of time. So these notches, you set them up by a Roycroft pack frame. Is basically a triangle. So I think that's correct. There we go. It's a triangle. Which you go from the base of your neck down to like your hips right across the top of your butt in length and why a little bit wider than across your hips because you want these to come out to tie your cordage around your waist and then you come off of here over the shoulders and down. So the idea when they build this with 550 cord is the knots they use tension it all together because 550 cord has a lot of stretch and it doesn't break real easy. So you can tie knots in there and then pull it around to shape, <coughs> excuse me, and tighten it up and it locks everything together. And you don't even necessarily have to have the notches. It just makes things fit better. I did it because I wanted something more permanent. You don't have to cut the notches in it to do this. Just as a quick one. You can tie it up. I decided to notch it. And I'm going to do what the Vikings used to use. What the Vikings used to call tree nails. For the holes. I'm going to push them through. It's basically pins with a... It, it looks like a wooden rivet, basically. And you make those the same. You make those... Did the same thing with this. You take a stick, how you cut the notches, get your pieces, and you come across here and you put a cut in it with either your blade or the onboard saw. That's why I like the tracker, it has a saw. You can use that, cut your notches down. Once you mark where, where you want your notches at, set up just like this, and then you can go across and use your blade to either take it out like that and then cut down. That's the slow way. The other way is you take your saw, you cut down where your marks are, and then cut down in between about every mm, eighth inch out or so. Take your screwdriver and pop your bits out. And then take your knife and flatten the bottom out. That's faster. Any way you can get it in there, Stop, cut, notch, whatever you're comfortable with. It doesn't matter if you're sitting at home on your deck making this and enjoy just wood carving. Then go the slow route. Fit everything perfectly. You know, it's all up to you how you want to do it. If you're out in the bush, I wouldn't even really bother cutting the notches if I didn't have to. Or maybe really shallow just to help lock them in. Okay, once you get there, then you come out and you see how this is set up. Okay, so you can see where the hole's at, or where you need the hole, down through the center. You look straight down, pull this out of the way, mark this, then you drill it. And you drill this just basically by twisting it around, pushing it through. That hole's there. Okay, we drilled that hole. Once you get that hole set, you put this back where you want it, push this in here, mark where the other hole goes. When you do that, you have your mark, you come back, that way your holes are lined up to where you want them to fit. And you just start pushing through and drilling. Like I said, this is oak, so it's kind of no fun. Greenwood, this drills a lot easier. Your all has kind of an edge on it, so you'll remove wood. As you can see, it's hitting this pretty good. You push it in, 
you're cutting out the wood, turn it a little bit, cut some more, turn it a little bit, cut some more. In that short little length of time, you can see I'm in that far, and you can see the wood coming out. Okay, so I've got that much in. My hole's that deep. I've already worked through quite a little bit. And if you've got a tender carrier, if you can collect all this stuff, especially when you're shaving the bark off, I didn't shave it completely off because if you're out, you can actually take the edge of your knife and scrape this off to build fires. If you got to do a friction fire and a way to carry this around, this stuff works good to, to extend the coal once you get it set up and going. If you've got a ferro rod with you, like right here, you can get a pile of that going and actually hopefully get a spark in it to where it'll go. But after this bit, we'll go to making the tree nails to pin it together and the cordage, which I cheated on. I used jute, but I still twisted the cordage out of it. You could use whatever natural fibers you got, or if you have cotton string or stuff, you can twist it together to make it stronger. There's all kinds of things you can use, whatever's handy in your area to make cordage. If you don't know how, I'll have a little short tutorial in here to show how to make cordage. And then it's up to you to figure out what materials in your area you can make cordage from. Here in the Great Forest of Kansas, we do have yucca growing, that works good. We have willow sometimes, cedar bark, the inner bits of cedar bark work really good. Um, Daylilies are around, I've used that. Cattails, cattails are almost everywhere and they make good cordage. The, that'll be the most time consuming bit of this is making the cordage. So if you aren't carrying cordage or cord and you make it, you'll, I mean, you'll get practicing at it. You get pretty good at it. And then it's just a matter of finding it. See, the hole's already done. You, you poke the hole through, get it through, and then you just keep working it out. There it is. Okay, now... To make this hole bigger, these things have an edge right here. So you can actually kind of work out more as you go. And so we got all three holes that are lined up. Next part you're gonna use, and if I was gonna do this in town for, for grins, I would, I would knock off this last step because I found out the cheap Chinese chopsticks, the bamboo ones, fit those holes pretty nicely. So you could actually go get those, go to have a nice Chinese meal with your wife, girlfriend, whatever, take the chopsticks home, shove them in here, glue them in, cut them off, and you're golden. Me, I decided to do, although we have one close and I do like it, and I got a whole pile of those things, because they're good for something else, I decided to do this the hard way. The Vikings built their ships using what they called tree nails. And it was a, essentially a wooden rivet. This should be plenty strong enough with this size of hole to hold this together, because we're going to take cordage and wrap around all three joints and then make the make the straps off of it. So we're just into the first part of this and we got this down to where everything's notched and put together. I've been working on the cordage so I've got a bunch of cordage pre-made and I've got the tree nails pre-made but this is how you do it. It's just it's relatively like I said it's relatively easy. Go to the stop cut all the way around you form your head up as you're going and you can do whatever you want a nice flat one I did like domed rivet heads I mean I made them look like like a uh, building rivets almost that they pound in medieval rivets rivets for armor you know you can carve them off and mine I made mine out of red cedar uh, 
I was going to use oak, but we didn't have, I didn't bring enough oak back. So red cedar works and it's kind of a little more distinctive looking. And then I've got jute cord that I've twisted up into actual to where it looks, where it's cordage. It's fairly cheap, fairly, fairly weak jute cord. And when you twist it together, it increases the strength by quite a lot. So I've got long links of it twisted up and we're going to do that. And I've got some hemp that I'll twist up into making the straps and the belt, basically what, what you tie around at the very last of it. But this is the first part of it. We'll go to the tree nails next. Okay. These are what I call tree nails, smaller versions of what the Vikings used to use to hold their ships together with. And they would drill a hole through two pieces. And it was usually a substructure or even outside where they're holding to the ribs. They'd drive these in. This would be on the outside, I think. No, it'd be on the inside. They'd drive it through until it was on the outside. They'd cut it off and drive a wedge in it would open the end up and hold it and it would be watertight and they called them tree nails now if you watch somebody that's a true master making them it's kind of impressive i'm not sure what wood they were using but i watched one being made and it was like holy crap the guy was wicked quick but you take your stick a stick any stick the softer wood usually works easier you don't want a wood that would be brittle because it's got to flex a little bit. This one is, this is red cedar and it's got some knots in it, which you can work around. Knots are just a little harder to cut. You just got to be a little more careful. Your head, you can form into a rivet. You can leave it flat. You can do whatever you want. The size of the head you want depends on how far you come down. What I'll do. So I'll come down and I'll cut a circle all the way around. Go a couple times to where it's kind of deep. And you'll work this down as you go. Then you come down here however long you want your tree nail and you do it again. That's just so you know. Now what you'll do is these cuts will be a stop gap or a stop cut. So you work around make pretty controlled cuts again around the knots it's going to be more of a pain in the butt but it'll work down. When you get to a point where it doesn't want to come up then stop and move. Okay. Once you get that far, you can cut that down like that. And if it's good dry wood, that's good tender and stuff like that. So you want to tend to keep it. You want to be careful when you're doing this so you don't blow the edge out on your way around. Then to go deeper, you just cut it again. And you got to kind of know how thick you want it, which you'll be able to tell. And this would be something you can do sitting around the fire at night, BSing with everybody, or on a break. You know, you can make little stuff, practice your knife skills. When you're doing this, keep your thumb below, because even if it does pop up or blow through, you're going to come back through and it's control cuts. I'm pulling with 
I'm pulling it in like that instead of doing this. And then as you can see, you can see there's a lip forming right here. You keep that up, then you come down here and you do the same thing all the way around. Then you can come in and take material off of the center to where you get the thickness where you want it. And this is, since I use the awl to drive holes through the backpack frame, this necessitates the size of it. So it has to be the size of the awl. So you just sit there and work that down and fit it until it gets to where it's a tight, pretty tight fit because you'll want it tight. I mean like squeak tight on a dry pin so that when you drive it through it'll tend to want to stay on its own without being loose. Then when you wedge it you can fit everything together tight and since since this is modern and if you're doing this at home for grins I would suggest using some like Gorilla Wood glue or something in between the joints just to hold it together because you're going to lash it anyhow but if you're going to use if you're going to make something that you want to use that would make a more of a minimum maintenance sort of frame but you'll want to do for that for this pack frame you want to do three of these like this and you can run it down pretty quick you can make them pretty fast like i said the stop cuts here is probably the most fiddly bit of it to get it down to the size you want And then you can actually even cut this off right here instead of another stop cut, but it's easier to hang on to it as longer. So if you just start bringing it down as a stop cut here, you don't have to take it all the way. You can take it off later, but that'll give you an idea where to stop and just work it down. Green knots are a lot easier to work than dry knots, just saying. Green pins also shrink, so be aware of that. But green pins are easier to make. They also tend to want to crack up through here. But you can, like I said, you can shape this, you can carve it however you like. I'm not that much of an artist, so. I usually just kind of dome them as you can see and I'll probably go through and sand all them down nice and pretty once they're in there. Then again I just may leave them. I, you know, I kind of like the look. That's all there is. That's all there is to making tree nails. This is the, this is this variety. There's another variety of tree nails I'll do on another video that's really kind of interesting that is a complete different use than what these are so that'll be an upcoming video next we'll go to the assembly of the rough pack frame pre-lashing okay after we've got all the notches cut and drilled and the pins made then it's time to assemble it I'm going to do an extra step and glue them together because I'm going to make this last a little bit longer, I'm hoping, so a little less maintenance. I'm going to glue it together along with the pins and then lash it. The glue is completely unnecessary. As the pins and everything will hold it together, it'll just be a little bit looser and you'll have to continually go through and tighten it up as time goes on. So I'm looking to alleviate some of that. This frame, instead of using, I used an oak sapling that I took down at mom's that was in the way. And I reused it for this. You can go to any box store, and uh, one I'm thinking of that I know I've seen in was Menards. And you can use, I think the smallest I would probably use is an inch dowling. I'd probably go inch and a quarter. And you can actually get oak there, so you can cut it, do whatever you want with your dowling. And then you could use for the pins, instead of carving out the tree nails like this, you can get bamboo chopsticks, and they work perfectly with the hole. They'll fit right dead in there. 
and then you can go that route glue it all together and you're good that'll take care of that problem the lashing you can if you want to go that route you can make your all-natural cord or you can get the the cheap jute that doesn't have a stupid high breaking strength and twist up your cordage which increases it greatly and make your own cordage that way you can practice your cordage and it'll still have the look and that works really great if you don't have an area where you can't make your own cordage or you're just not in the mood to go get your own supplies to do it and it'll it'll still give you practice on making the cordage in case you ever have to and that's kind of what this is is learning learning things to do okay now what we're gonna do is put it together go first two notches will go together I'll smear a little glue in there and drive a pin in and these pins are different lengths that I think I'll use save the long one for the thickest section which is probably smart anyway it was just what start, started getting cut And I'm using Gorilla Glue Clear. You can use any particular glue that you like. This will this is a non-foaming glue, which will save the trim time a lot. And you don't have to use a terrible amount. Just get enough in there. Seat it in. Your pin will go through. Be careful when you're pushing your pin in because they're supposed to fit tight you don't want to break it that will make you cry there we go we got the pin in we'll set this to where I can tap the pin in That made it pretty solid. Later we'll come through, cut it off, split it, drive a wedge in, and then trim it off again. We'll make sure we got that all the way down. Okay. Now we'll go to the next one. It should sit in it was upside down. Nope, had it right. We'll set it in like that. Everything's kind of contoured tightly. The thick pin will go on this side, so we'll choose the other pin on this side. Set it down. Little bit of glue. Get the holes lined up. Start twisting it through. Okay. Now the holes are engaged. Drive your tree nail in. Make sure we get okay. Let's see that as tight as it's going to get. Now, your last one. This one could be a little tricky. It's longer, so it's going to have to be definitely be a little more careful with it. 
Okay, we'll get it started. Okay, we got the pin through. And then we pull everything tight, slide the pin in. And as we dry this thing down, Ah, broke it off. I was hoping that wouldn't happen, but it did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this and we'll glue it on for looks. We'll push a bamboo pin in that, which I'll get here in a second. Glue it all in, push a bamboo pin in, and then we'll glue this on top so it maintains the look, but we'll still have the string. I was wondering about that because of the length. Always have a backup because nothing ever works to plan. Okay, so what we're going to do is just push this down through. In theory, there we go. Okay, the glue set up. Everything's dry. Even the pin that I broke and replaced with the bamboo, I cut the head off and glued it on. So it actually does what it's supposed to and looks like it's supposed to. Next, we're going to lop the pins off split them out and wedge them okay so we're going to cut the pin Okay, that pin's cut off. Pop the blade out. And we split the pin. Take a wedge. And hopefully we can get it started. Okay. Open it up just a little bit. Get the wedge going. And then very gently tap it down in there as far as it'll go. Okay. What that does is it opens up the end of the wedge and makes kind of a mushroom. That's in there as far as it's gonna go. So then you go back in and cut it off. And even without the glue, that would hold it in there where it's gonna stay there. It doesn't look like much, but you can see there it is. We'll do it to that pin, and then we'll take the point of the knife and we'll split this one out and do it to that pin. And then on the next video, we'll get down to lashing this beastie. See what we got.